This myth is particularly damaging to dogs. And I say this because if we think that it's okay for our dog to spend all day running around in the yard with nothing else to keep them occupied except just running around, um, it leads to further isolating our dog in that environment. Because if we think that it's acceptable for our dog to be outside um, all day on their own, and depending on what a day means for you, your dog might be alone for five or six hours, three or four hours, maybe 12, 14 hours, maybe 16 hours until you come home. That's a long time to expect your dog to amuse themselves by running around. Um, and when we actually unravel that statement and this myth, you can see the flaws in it already. Now, it also means that we're going to be led down the pathway to thinking that if it's okay for our dog to spend 16 hours a day or 12 hours a day in the backyard on their own, just amusing themselves by running around, then it's perfectly okay to leave them there all day, every day. And this leads to further isolation of our dogs where our dogs are seeing less and less of their human social group and they're being excluded from their human social group, their human family. And this is extremely damaging to dogs because they're very social animals just like us. And when we consider the last 10 and a half thousand years at least of domestication um, of dogs, dogs were specifically domesticated to live with humans in close confines, to be our companion animals. And when we consider um, the hypocrisy of leaving your dog outside alone, isolated, expecting them to amuse themselves by running around, irrespective of the size of the outdoor space that they have, um, that is extremely uh, counterproductive and detrimental to your dog's mental health and well-being. So what does your dog really do all day? The only way we can really know that is if we actually set up a video recorder and record your dog's movements for every minute of the day. Now of course that's impractical, but it's not impractical to actually set up a video camera and record your dog for the first half an hour or 45 minutes after you leave or at different times of the day to actually find out what your dog's really doing. How is your dog really spending, spending their time? And more importantly, is your dog's behaviour vastly different um, to when you're home compared to when they are home alone? And that's the important thing about this myth that I really want to talk to you about. Because the behaviour that your dog performs when they're home alone is just as important as the behaviour that they're performing when you are home with them. So if you've actually got footage of your dog and they're not running around, they're actually sitting at the gate because that's the gate where you come in, um, or they're sitting at the back door because that's the window through which they can see you when you come home, then you have a dog that's not so interested in their environment and so the acreage, having an acreage is a moot point because your dog's mental state, your dog's emotional state is too busy focused on when you're coming home. So the normal behaviour for a dog um, should be allocated to different things like exploring their environment, um, Obviously, eating, going to the toilet, resting. Resting is really important. Um, if you have an environment where acreage can be very stimulating for a dog, um, if you've got lots of nooks and crannies that can, you know, your dog can actually investigate, that's great. But if you've got lots of wildlife and your dog likes to chase the wildlife or chase other, other wildlife or bugs or insects or things like that, then your dog could actually be overstimulated. So it's really important that your dog has a balance of things to do. And it's also important that your dog uh, allocates enough time to rest and actually um, is able to just be nice and calm and not reactive to their environment. So if you see that your dog's behaviour um, changes when you come home and your dog is is very excited to see you and then he's chasing the birds again and grabbing toys and running over to you to play with to in order to initiate play with you, things like that, then your dog is going to be overexcited in that particular environment and you need really to have a balance of other activities to focus their mental energy into something productive. And that's where enrichment 
food toys, puzzle toys, nose, scent games, those sorts of things are extremely important to balance out your dog's day and give them productive things to do. Now, if, if your dog is not able to relax and you have video footage and you see your dog is pacing, barking, um, chasing things um, and um, not able to settle, not lying down, they may be sitting, they may be actually scanning the environment, looking for things to do, then chances are that your dog is actually not really benefiting from that environment because their sympathetic nervous system is engaged continually and that's setting them um, in a situation where they're going to be having an increased heart rate, increased adrenaline activity, increased cortisol activity and if your dog's not able to relax because they're looking for something to do or they're reacting to a lot of different stimuli or triggers in your environment, then that is not actually a productive expenditure of their time because they're not able to allocate their time to a range of things that they should be allocating their time to. And an important one is rest because dogs will rest in cycles during the day um, and they do need rest. So that's why it's really important for your dog to be able to have productive activities, to focus their mental energy on different things that engage them, that actually engage their learning pathways. If you imagine your yard or your acreage has got lots of toys lying around it, or maybe you don't give your dog toys because of course you think that the acreage is enough for them to keep themselves amused and that's all they're gonna be doing is running around then you'll probably find that if you leave those toys lying around, your dog isn't going to have much interest in them because there's no novelty. They're the same things, they're in the same place, they're the same toys that the dog sees every day. So understanding that dogs need variety just like humans do is really important in maintaining your dog's not just physical welfare but their mental welfare, which is so very important on a daily basis. So if you consider that for the next 10 to 15 years, your dog is going to be in the same environment, doing the same things every day on a daily basis, ask yourself, do you watch the same TV episode over and over again, or do you look forward to a different episode? Do you read the same newspaper every day, the same edition every day, or do you want to see tomorrow's edition tomorrow? You don't want to read yesterday's paper today. So to put it another way, If you were told that you didn't have to work another day in your life and you could stay at home every day, but you weren't able to access your computer or your social media or the TV um, or your phone, and you weren't allowed to make yourself anything to eat um, until somebody else arrived to feed you, it doesn't sound like a great deal after all. But we expect our dogs to sit in the same environment and amuse themselves and leave them to their own devices to find their own entertainment. So I'd like you to just consider that myth really carefully and look at your dog's life from their perspective.